Hi, good evening to everyone. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me. As we talk about a liver disease surge, this is data coming out of the United Kingdom. And I think that as my subscribers and listeners, you ought to know what's going on. What does it mean, though, for your health? This is very important. And for those people who are following me, sometimes some of the things I say, people ask, well, why did you say that? Well, it's simply because I am looking at the whole pandemic through an autoimmune paradigm. What it does is it allows me to predict what's going to happen next. And as fate would have it, in terms of this information that has recently come out from the Office of National Statistics, here they're showing alcohol-specific deaths in the UK registered in 2022, and they're looking at it by various regions. And you have to look at the date here. This is April 2020, 22nd of April, 2024. So just a few days ago. Now, why and how would I have known that this was going to happen? And why am I predicting that this is going to get much worse if people don't actually take attention to their health? Well, before I get started, as usual, there are some important updates for us to take into consideration. The first thing is related to what I just said, is that you need to make sure you click on the link below to see this course. I've done this course before and I've put it together very quickly in the sense that I realize that people need to know this. So please click on the link below. It's been discounted significantly. I'll be talking about some of the slides in it, looking at exactly what is happening with regards to the liver and how alcohol can relate to it. And critically, this bit about autoimmune liver disease and COVID around COVID, or I should say more specifically, anything related to the spike protein. So that's a very, very important point. In order to understand what I'm saying about the description for some people who are not yet used to YouTube, here is an important point that I need you to do as well. If you are on YouTube, because there are different channels watching it, this is what would happen when you come to a page. You will see that there is an image I'm talking, if you're watching this afterwards. Critically, it seems as though my subscribe button has been hidden for quite a lot of people. So I think I've gotten a go around for that. And you can see right here, if you just put your mouse um, pointer on it, you will then see the button come up. See, there it goes subscribe button appears and you can subscribe. And more importantly as well, when you want to see more information, you have to click on the more button here to then see all the links that are relevant that I'm telling you about. They will all be there. So that's an important update. And the final point before we start talking about what the, uh, the data had said, remember we are going for number one on Amazon with Humming Heroes. Two days to go for the pre-order. Please click on the link, go there, join us. It's only a small price for this because we want to get this very important book about nitric oxide to number one. Okay, so as I said, getting back to the issue about liver disease. A liver disease is just one of the organs that are going to be affected based on the autoimmune paradigm. Heart, I've dealt with. And again, if you look at the courses that I've done, I've pointed to that. Kidney, I'm going to do another big one because this one is really important as well. But I've made sure that this course is available because I think people need to think about it. It's all about the fact that liver disease is surging and people are thinking that their metabolism and their physiology is the same as it was before the pandemic. Anything related to the spike protein is a problem. So let's look at exactly what they said in terms of this update. As I said, alcohol-specific deaths in the UK registered in 2022. Deaths caused by diseases known to be a direct consequence of alcohol by age, sex, and region. As I said, this was in April 2024, so just a few days ago. And I want to pick out the main points here. And so the main points that they have are that, well, for one, in 2022, there were 10,000, just over 10,000 deaths, or 16.6 .6 per 100,000 of the population from alcohol-specific causes registered in the UK. 
the highest number on record. The number between 2022 and 2021, it was 4.2% higher in 2022 than 2021, which was at 9,641 deaths. But when you looked at 2019, the deaths around alcohol liver disease was only 7,565. So the increase up to 10,048 is a 32.8% increase above 2019. A 32% increase. That is, that is frightening. Because if that trajectory continues, my goodness, the impact and the implications to the population health are enormous. This really should be top of public health agenda. They should be trying to work out what is going on. And so you can see here, what they went on and pointed out is that between 2012 and 2019, rates of alcohol-specific deaths in the UK had remained stable. No statistically significant changes in that period of time. But suddenly, in 2021, 2022, they had a big surge. And that surge was mostly in Scotland and Northern Ireland um, and so on. I'll not go into the regions. The link is there if you want to go and take a look at it um, uh, in detail. So the natural assumption that people say is that, oh, goodness, the lockdown and people have been just drinking themselves to death. That's an assumption. And so my first question is, well, if that is the case, I expect to see a significant rise in alcohol consumption because that's what would happen. People start drinking more and therefore they end up with more liver disease. That's what you'd expect. Well, it doesn't turn out that that's necessarily the same. So what I've done here, um, I've gone to Statista. Uh, luckily, I'm able to see this without um, paying for it at the moment. But yes, you'll have to pay if you want to see the full information. But this is very valuable statistics. And this is looking at the UK in terms of the mean number of alcohol units consumed per week in 2021. Now, what you have here is that actually the recommended levels for women is about 10 units. And you can see here across the age groups, women actually have been pretty good in all these age groups, 16 to 24, all the way up to 75 and older. Men have been slightly higher. When you say that the recommendation of 14 units, there's been slightly higher in the group 55 to 64. But other than that, they've just been on point. Sadly, I'm not able to show you the most important one that went along with Statista. It's behind a, a paywall at the moment. But it demonstrated that there was a fall in alcohol consumption 2021 into 2022. So the assumption that lots of people are drinking a lot, and this is the cause of our problem, is just not necessarily accurate. So therefore, if that's the case, what exactly could be the cause? That's where I then jump to what I was speaking about in terms of the presentation. And I've, I've just clipped here a, a few points around it. So this is, this is a full presentation. So you can see here on the left, in terms of the slides, it goes all the way down to slide number 64 here. And I'm looking at solutions as well in this part. And this part is very important because nobody will want to acknowledge it. What happens? Is there a connection with regards to the elephant in the room? I can't even say what it is because it, otherwise you may not be able to see the video. But this is a very important point. And when I discuss in there, this is one of the papers from 2022, and this was identifying the fact that, yes, we do know that there are new and um, new onset and relapsed liver diseases around this. And so when we look at the conclusion in this paper, 
it highlights, as usual, the, all the results. It shows all the cases, all the different kinds of cases. The big one, in my view, was autoimmune hepatitis. Now, they only had 138 cases. That means 138 cases that were severe enough to end up in hospital. Um, and this is the big one, in my view, based on, on the information. And critically, in the conclusion, as usual, they are hoping that this information does not discourage anybody against this worldwide pandemic because the cases are relatively small in relation to the hundreds of millions of vaccinations. That's standard talk. But when we think about the fact that we are seeing a 30% increase in the numbers of liver disease, that is humongous. And you cannot therefore take this elephant out of the room. Here is what people misunderstand. And this is what I cover in the course as well. I think that there are three biggies. You have in the background fatty liver. And I think it's almost up to 50% of the population over a certain age, uh, certainly if they have any level of obesity, has a fatty liver. The fatty liver is associated with fibrosis. When you add on to that, this in, in the context of liver injury, and this is, I, I should have probably said, spike protein-induced liver injury because it can also occur from infection. Both can damage the liver. And then the final biggie is alcohol. Now, what people don't quite understand is that even potentially at your normal alcohol levels, if this is occurring, and this is already in place, the risk of damage is very, very significant. And that's what I thought public health should be saying to people, is that you may think that, yeah, I'm used to drinking three bottles of wine a week and it doesn't bother me. But your liver may not be able to take that anymore. And what will happen is that liver disease is silent you only start to recognize what is going on when you have a situation when there is severe damage to the liver in the context of uh, liver cirrhosis. I'm going to show you one slide here from the, from the course. And I think that this is what really people need to understand with regards to how the liver actually works. It's a remarkable organ, but we have to protect it. Here is what happens in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This is NAFLD. And there is damage. So what happens is that the, the fluid or the blood coming through um, the, the liver from the intestines and otherwise goes in this section. And then it seeps through this space here into this um, region called the space of DISI. This is probably more like it, what it looks like in a healthy um, liver region. Then it coats, it then goes on to the hepatocytes here. These are all hepatocytes, which will then pick up toxins and do all the work that hepatocytes do in order to protect the body. So the liver is the first pass. This space is very important. And what seems to be happening is that there is inflammation in this region, especially because of these specific cells. And then they start to deposit um, um, collagen. And the collagen then makes the space small, squeezes it together, and that is the onset of fibrosis. So this is what happens already in non-alcoholic uh, non fatty liver disease. It also happens in relation to damage from alcohol. So when you combine the three things, as I said, the fact that for many people, they already have a fatty liver, which is exacerbated by alcohol and may have low-grade um, cirrhosis occurring, but very slowly. And then you have spike-induced liver injury, and the people are drinking alcohol at the same levels that they have been drinking at the same. That is a recipe for disaster. And I think that this is where we are now. This is already an absolutely frightening situation. Again, let's remind ourselves at the end here. Here are the main points. We are looking at a 32.8% increase from 2019, from 7,565 deaths to 10,048 deaths. These are the people who have died 
not the people who have transitioned from no liver disease to severe liver disease and who are going to die in the next few years. So there is no doubt these numbers have to increase. The point is that if we don't mitigate it, they will increase exponentially, just like we have with this arrow here. So the point at the end of this presentation is please, I've put together a course that is aimed to be educational. Critically, I've put in it solutions, things that you can do in terms of reducing your risk. And that often means changing your lifestyle, certainly reducing alcohol, looking at reducing the impact of the fatty liver. But there are also very important strategies that are included there that are simple, over-the-counter supplements that you can take that can protect your liver. This is serious, and I need you to pass this on. In a sense, you have to become public health because public health is so silent about some of these extremely serious situations. So as I said, keep let's keep focused on the facts. Let's try and see if we can anticipate what is happening, and let's critically try and see if we can make a difference for our health and the health of others. Have a great evening.